welcome and good morning to the Gospel of Health School of the Prophets. We're joining the waiting angels and the Holy Spirit as we gather to study the Word of God together. We are continuing in our study. We are finishing, as it were, our series called The Kingdom of God this morning. And we're looking at a very, very special topic. Our topic for this morning is Daniel, Herald of the Kingdom. Daniel, Herald of the Kingdom, is our last in our series of talks on the kingdom of God, the plan of salvation. We are continuing to study the principles of God's word and making present truth plain to those that truly desire to understand line upon line and precept upon precept, the right division of the word. We're going to, at this time, go into a special series of examinations of exactly how the book of Daniel heralds or brings the good news of the kingdom and also introduce a study series we'll be doing on the mighty prophetic book of Daniel. You're going to see in your description box, if you're watching this in any future time, a link to a series of 10 studies, 10 sermons on the book of Daniel, which will be introduced in this message. Uh, for those that are watching this in March of 2022, you're going to notice that we're going to not only have this message this morning, but beginning this evening and going throughout the next nine days, because it will start the first this night, this evening, we'll be going for 10 series or 10 sermons examining the book of Daniel, starting at 7.30 tonight. We're going to continue to study point by point, day by day, in a series of revival meetings, the book of Daniel. We're going to be examining the second and seventh and eighth and ninth chapter of the book of Daniel and join together a good foundation to understand the mighty prophecies of the book of Daniel and why in this message this morning we'll see why the book of Daniel is so important and why this idea of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of glory and the judgment that we spoke of in previous studies is so vital to these end times that we're living in and a people living at the end of time before Jesus comes Again, let's have a word of prayer and go into this study this morning called Daniel, Herald of the Kingdom. Let's pray together. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, this is our prayer this morning as we ask for that daily bread, that you would make known thy power and thy kingdom this morning, that you would strengthen us in the inward man, both to both know and to grow in the knowledge and power of thy kingdom. Let the kingdom of God be seen in us. Let us, through the development of Christian character, be able to have an entrance into thy glorious eternal kingdom. We ask, we pray, with the forgiveness of sins, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our, our topic for this morning as we gather is Daniel, Herald of the Kingdom. Daniel, Herald of the Kingdom is our topic for this morning as we close out our series called Kingdom of God, the Plan of Salvation. We have in previous studies established some very, very definite truths and some wonderful truths to those that are studying point by point, study to study with us. <clears throat> we understood that the Kingdom of Grace, which is the implantation of a principle in the heart of man, the power of God, the divine nature, the, the influence, power, and strength, teaching, guiding of the Holy Spirit in man is the outward showless work of the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of grace coming within you. We understood that. Christ came and ushered in this kingdom upon the earth, a spiritual kingdom that began this kingdom of grace, this acceptable year of the Lord, as it were. There also comes after this kingdom of grace and this establishment and a rallying together of subjects of the kingdom of grace, a kingdom of glory, an everlasting kingdom that shall not pass away. We, in the many studies, established this great truths, especially in our last study, the kingdom of grace, kingdom of glory. We established these truths very clearly to the mind. We also established the fact that this second kingdom, this kingdom of glory, is set up at the second coming of Christ. The development of this glorious, visible, and beginning of an eternal kingdom begins with Christ's second coming. 
Now, we want to establish some things concerning this because in the 24th chapter of Matthew, look at Matthew 24 with me. Matthew 24, let's turn there. Matthew, the 24th chapter, we'll notice the disciples preaching the kingdom of grace, preaching this kingdom that was within, preaching this first work that Christ came to do with his disciples, ushering in this dispensation of the Holy Spirit. They were very interested because of the teaching of Christ and the preaching of Christ. They were very desirous because of the ministry and parables and teachings and doctrines of Christ to understand this kingdom come, this kingdom to come. And when and how will this kingdom be ushered in? The 24th chapter of Matthew draws us to that. Matthew 24 and verse 3, let's read that. In Matthew 24 and verse 3, notice the language. Because we understand this coming kingdom, when Christ comes, is the kingdom of glory. What are they asking? Matthew 24 and verse 3. Let's read it. In Matthew 24, 3 it says, And as they sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? That's time. When? When shall these things be? And what? How? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Curious they connected the coming with the end of the world. Curious that they asked, when shall this coming of this work be? Coming of Christ. How shall we understand these signs? There were certain signs that would take place in the world that would show its coming is near. The parables of Christ teach that very clearly. But also, when? When? When they ask the question when, they ask the question when, but they also they say, this coming in connection with the end of the world. They are correct. The coming of Christ comes at the end of this world. We're going to find that very, very carefully as we study both today and in our future 10-night series on Daniel. But when we look at this word, I want you to notice among the various signs and the various elements of time explained in the 24th and 25th and so on chapters of Matthew, explaining this great truth that was asked in Matthew 24 and verse 3, that there is one essential book for reading, proffered in the 24th chapter of Matthew. There is an essential volume, a prophetic writ, that is being offered and proffered unto the scripture reader, unto the reader or disciple of Christ. There is a preeminent book that is of vital importance to those that would understand both when and how this kingdom of glory Second coming of Christ. This kingdom of glory would be ushered in. And the signs foretelling its near approach. Which book, which volume of the scriptures does Christ preeminently offer and give to the reader of scripture and makes it so plain that without such reading and understanding, the principles of the end times cannot be understood. Which book are we ushered to? In Matthew 24, notice the 24th chapter of Matthew. Matthew 24 and verse 14, notice the language. Of all the whole chapter, notice what it says in verse 14. The Bible says in Matthew 24 and verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Notice he says that there's a gospel to be preached at the end, because the question was asked, when shall you come? And the things concerning the end of the world. Well, the kingdom of glory is going to come. It's coming at the end of the world. Notice a gospel must be preached to awaken people to this glorious kingdom coming, not at the first coming of Christ, but at the second coming of Christ. But notice verse 15, Matthew 24 and verse 15, the very next text. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, notice, Spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Now stop right there. The question of signs concerning this end time work and even this gospel going to all the world is kind of going to all the world, pardon me, is seemingly connected with this prophetic event to happen called the abomination of desolation and the standing in the holy place, which is a central issue to understanding this, what I call a threefold application of prophecy. Yet, Notice how this abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel is even made more imperative. And the understanding and reading of the book of Daniel is made vital, essential to students of prophecy at the end, preparing for this glorious 
kingdom and the preaching of the gospel announcing it. In verse 15, it says, it's closing out this, whoso readeth, let him understand. Whoso readeth the book of Daniel with this understanding of this gospel to be preached and this prophetic event that needs to take place, let him understand. All the rest will not understand. All the rest will be in prophetic darkness. All the rest will not be awakened to the time they're living in and be sleeping and eating with the drunken. That's in Matthew 24 as well. As we understand this, brothers and sisters, it is essential that we look at the book of Daniel to understand this understanding of when the kingdom of glory comes at Christ's second coming. What are the signs concerning? The book of Daniel, Daniel is given to us as an essential book to be understood and read unless we are in outer darkness in these last days. Are we living in the last days? Is the question you should ask yourself at this point. Yet, we are continue on because when we look at the book of Daniel, not only does Christ just give this as a preeminent book, a essential book, a vital book, but when we examine the book of Daniel from a word standpoint, looking at the words, there is no book in the Old Testament. There is no book in the Old Testament that refers to and mentions and makes mention of the kingdom or even kingdoms more than the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel speaks of the idea of a kingdom and kingdoms more than any book of the Old Testament. Even the book of Chronicles, even the, the book of the Kings does not mention the word kingdom as, as completely, as continually as the book of Daniel does. The book of Daniel speaks to us and calls to us to examine it so that we can understand this coming kingdom, yea, even the coming of Christ, yea, even the second coming, and the nature and signs and principles that show us it's coming near that we can preach this gospel correctly and understand the signs of the time. Now, if we believe this to be true, and I believe it is, and very soon we will understand together, collectively walking together the scriptures, how true it is, let's examine quickly, let's look at a cursory overview of some of these mighty prophecies in Daniel so that we can see how essential it is if we truly want to understand the kingdom of God and its coming kingdom that is even at the doors. In the book of Matthew 24, we noticed this verse in verse 15, calling to the book of Daniel. Let's go there. Look at the book of Daniel. And the second chapter of that very book, Daniel chapter 2. In Daniel 2, we see the first of the many great prophecies of the prophet Daniel. And in Daniel 2, let's notice what the Bible says concerning these prophecies, especially, especially what type of prophecy is Daniel giving? What type of prophecies are Daniel giving? Is Daniel giving prophecies for his time, for his day? Prophecies only concerning the first coming of Christ, which was 2,000 years ago? What type of prophecies are we seeing in these mighty prophetic books of Daniel? Hence, Christ calls us and proffers us this book as a reading that is essential for those that would understand. In the book of Daniel chapter 2, Daniel 2, look at verse, Daniel 2 and verse 28. Look at what type of prophecy is being presented here. Daniel 2 and verse 28. Daniel 2, 28 says this. It says, oh, pardon me, Daniel 2, 20, I'm in the wrong place. Daniel 2 and verse 28. Hmm. Seemingly, my, my, my Bible has been damaged here. In Daniel 2 and verse 28, I, I beg your pardon, Daniel 2 and verse 28, the Bible very clearly says, let me just quote it for you just generally, in the second chapter of Daniel, verse 28, you're reading it, you probably see it in your Bible or on your computer right now. In Daniel 2 and verse 28, the Bible says clearly, Daniel says clearly, that the prophecies given in the second chapter of Daniel are for the latter times or the last days. The prophecies of Daniel are for the last days, the end of time, the very time period. In the query of the disciples in Matthew 24, the end of the world, the time when Christ comes again. The prophets of Daniel walk us down to the end of time. Hence, Daniel is the book that Jesus said we must understand to understand this work, even this preparation, to give this gospel, receive this gospel, stand in this gospel at the end of time. The 
prophecies of Daniel are for the latter days, for the end of time. In the second chapter of Daniel, in Daniel chapter 2, we notice also that the Bible teaches and gives to us a very, very special understanding of when this time would come. Or some of the signs concerning, as Matthew 24 prophets us to read this, one of the signs concerning this coming kingdom. Now in the book of Daniel chapter 2, write, uh, write in your notes Daniel 2 and verse 40. Daniel 2 and verse 40. In Daniel 2 and verse 40, the Bible says very, very carefully, if you read it carefully, the Bible says that there are going to be four kingdoms. Four kingdoms are right upon the earth. The Bible speaks of Babylon, Medo-Persia, then there's Greece to come, historically we know, and then a Roman kingdom that's divided, as, as, essentially, down to the end of time. After these four world empires have had their reign, then the Bible says an eternal kingdom is set up, symbolized by a great stone or a rock, and who is the rock, of course, coming and destroying all these kingdoms, represented by metals, gold, and silver, and brass, and so on. These metals, or the metals of a image of a man, are smashed to pieces by a mighty stone, a mighty rock, symbolizing the coming of Christ, symbolizing the destruction of this world, and setting up a, another kingdom. After the fourth, another kingdom, a kingdom that shall not pass away, not be overtaken by another, a kingdom that will last forever. Now again, brothers and sisters, if we understand this to be true, in the second chapter of Daniel, a prophecy of the last days. A prophecy that brings us down to the coming of Christ, destroying the kingdom of this world and setting up his kingdom. Then only after four kingdoms shall we see this work. Has not the Roman Empire fallen? How close can we be? Both the pagan Roman Empire fallen and the papal Roman Empire has fallen. What does a prophecy tell us concerning how soon the coming of Christ would be? The Bible says after these four kingdoms had their reign, Christ sets up his kingdom. How close can we be? This is how important for understanding the book of Daniel is to bring us down to the end of time. But not only in the book of Daniel chapter 2 does the latter days come to life and shows us how close we are to the end of time. The seventh chapter of the book of Daniel comes. And the seventh chapter does the same thing the second chapter does. What was represented in the second chapter by the various parts of a image, a pagan image of a man represented with a head of gold and breasts and arms of silver, all the way down, different metals destroyed by a great stone cut out with our hands. In the seventh chapter, these same four empires represented by metals in the second chapter, seventh chapter comes and represent these same empires represented by wild beasts of the wilderness, by a lion, leopard, bear. All these kingdoms are represented by animals, even a fourth beast, four kingdoms, a fourth beast that has no description, a terrible beast, not even like another anything found in the natural world, but a beast dreadful and terrible. Four kingdoms, Daniel 2, four kingdoms, Daniel 7, four kingdoms of metal, Daniel 2, four beasts, four ravenous wild beasts in the seventh chapter of Daniel, but yet and still, just as it said there, it repeats itself. Look at Daniel chapter 7. Daniel 7 and verse 17. It repeats itself and makes us understand that these four kingdoms shall rule. And then, after the fourth kingdom, God sets up his kingdom. Even a kingdom for the saints of God that will last forever. The seventh chapter of Daniel puts it this way. Look at Daniel 7. Daniel 7 and verse 17 and 18. Daniel 7 verse 17 and 18. Notice how the four kingdoms of Daniel 2 is paralleled in the seventh chapter with four beasts. And then the kingdom of God is set up. Notice the book of Daniel 7. Daniel 7 verse 17 and 18. It says, these great beasts, this is Daniel 7, 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings. Direct parallel. Four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom, how long? Forever, even forever and ever. What happens after the fourth kingdom? The fourth beast? Go to the scene. The saints take the kingdom. How long shall this next kingdom last? The kingdom that is the same thing that is set up by the Christ of the stone, the rock of ages? 
It is a kingdom that lasts forever and ever. And when we look at the work of God, the work of God in the seventh chapter goes further because the first, I'm sorry, the second chapter gives some information. The seventh chapter parallels that information, but in repeating it, it enlarges and it gives more information because we're understanding, according to the question of Christ, both what and how the coming at the end of the world should be. So when he says, look, read the book of Daniel, Daniel is showing us what and how the coming of the Lord shall be, or the coming of this kingdom shall be at the end of the world. So it repeats itself and gives more information. Daniel 7, if you look at verse 19 through 22, write, write down your notes, Daniel 7, verse 19 through 22. In Daniel 7, verse 19 through 22, we just read verse 17 and 18, verse 19 through 22, three great things are seen there. In 19, verse 22 of Daniel chapter 7, the Bible speaks of, this fourth beast and a little horn. This fourth beast having horns upon his head and among those horns, a little horn. Another power comes out of this fourth Roman Empire to do a great and terrible work upon the earth. History corroborates this. The second, second thing it talks about, second thing it talks about is not only this little horn, but this little horn's persecution of the saints of God. Number two, the persecution of the saints of God by this little horn power until the judgment. Wow. The Bible shows how Daniel 2's view of the world seems like the fourth kingdom comes and boom, there's immediate heavenly kingdom. No. The seventh chapter comes and shows after this fourth kingdom, there's going to be a persecution through that fourth kingdom. Even this little horn power, this Roman power that comes up after Rome of the Caesars, this papal Roman power that will persecute saints or Christians and do a terrible work upon the earth. His story uh, not only validates this, but shows that whether you look at the work of the Crusades, the Inquisition, the establishment of slavery, all tie back to the Roman church, the church of Rome that exists even to this day. All these things, history cooperates. But the Bible says that this little horn power that will persecute the saints will only do it until the judgment sits. So here we see a more information concerning this fourth empire and even this little horn power that comes out of Rome. But then this persecution leads to a God sits in judgment of the world. And after this judgment of the world, after this judgment is complete, third thing, after this judgment is complete, saints take the kingdom. So what do we see in verse 19 to 22? In verse 19 to 22, we see this fourth beast and a little horn. That's number one. Number two, this little horn persecutes the saints until the judgment sits, until God sits in judgment of this world. Number three, after the judgment is finished, then the saints take this everlasting kingdom. More information is given to understand, even the seventh chapter, what is said at the first part of the seventh chapter, that there must be a persecution and a judgment. Now, if you look at the book of Daniel, look at Daniel with me. Verse 26, we're in Daniel 7. Look at verse 26 and 27. Daniel chapter 7, verse 26 and 27. Here again, after verse 19 through 22, in verse 26 and 27, it even repeats it again that this work of, <clears throat> of judgment must sit and then comes the kingdom. It repeats it again. It's like a triple application in the very book of Daniel chapter 7. It shows this by triple emphasis that this is a truth for the last days. Look at the book of Daniel chapter 7. Daniel 7 with me and verse 26 and 27 we read together. Daniel 7 verse 26 says this. It says, but the judgment shall sit. And they shall take away his dominion, meaning this little horn power, his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. Verse 27, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Meaning the Son of God, meaning Christ our Lord. This is a truth for the word of God. And we want to examine two of the great prophecies of the book of Daniel. And there's more. This is a wonderful 
book for understanding the prophecy of the last day, a book very rarely studied by Christians and even those believing, claiming to believe this last days are, these last days are upon us. Here in the scriptures, we've seen and been brought to an attention of something that many people don't understand as well. In the book of Daniel, put forth very clearly, and that's the idea of the judgment. People know what persecution is. They understand what happened to Christians during what's called the dark ages of papal supremacy. We understand that historically. But what is this judgment? And what judgment will God sit upon the earth with that will be coming at the end of the world, right before, right before the saints take the kingdom, or this everlasting kingdom is set up, or Christ's second coming. I hope we're following each other. I hope we're coming together and seeing how all these things come together very plainly for us. We're going to be studying in 10 nights, 10 series, 10 sermons, the book of Daniel to even expand upon this. We're giving an overview this morning showing how important, how essential, how vital the book of Daniel is to understanding the kingdom of God, the coming kingdom of God, the kingdom of glory, Christ's second advent. But let's examine this idea of the judgment for, for a second, if you will. If we take the word of God and we look at just a few scriptures, we can get a grasp of something that we were studying in our next revival series of 10 nights. We're going to get a grasp of what this great event is that precedes, comes right before the second coming of Christ, right before the setting up of the eternal kingdom, right before the end of this world. What is the judgment? Let's look at four scriptures. Four scriptures, let's see if we can gather together, maybe three or four, what this judgment is in a capsule form for those that may not be familiar with this concept found in the book of Daniel, the book Christ says must show us and give us understanding for the end of time. Look with me in the book of Ecclesiastes. <clears throat> Look at Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, the last chapter of Ecclesiastes. You have Psalms, Proverbs, and then the book of Ecclesiastes, right before the book of Song of Solomon, you have the book Ecclesiastes. Look at the 12th chapter with me. Turn there with me, if you will. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14. Does the Bible speak of the judgment? It's now given through the prophets of what the judgment is and how this judgment, which we found out comes at the end of the world, is going to take place and what it entails for you and for me. In the book of Daniel, we found some information that's going to lead us now to look at the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, looking at verse 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12, looking at verse 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, let us hear the conclusion. That means the end. The conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God, verse 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says everything done upon this earth is going to be reviewed, going to be brought into, going to be examined in this judgment. Judgment is like almost a courtroom where judgment or justice or review and, re and recognition of righteousness or wickedness is ascertained. The scales of balance are being weighed for righteousness or for evil. Here at the end of the time, at the end of this world, right before Christ comes, there must be a judgment. The Bible says, God shall bring every work into judgment. This is the conclusion of the whole matter, why we should fear God and keep his commandments, because every secret thing, good, or evil is coming into this judgment hour. Those that done right will be rewarded. Those that were done evil will be rewarded. And each will receive his due reward. Those who escape wrath through the grace, power, and merits, the forgiving grace, the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will stand with the righteous. Though their sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. But what would someone do without a knowledge of the judgment or knowledge of the second coming of Christ or a soon hastening approach when it comes to the multitude of sins that rest upon them. Would they lay in idle security, in false security of the fact that day after day continues and there's no need of repentance and consecration and seeking the Lord while he might be found? The church sleeps. The world sleeps, and here we are at the end of time. The prophecies are showing us that we're right at the point where God will judge everything. This is the judgment. Let's continue on. Look now in the book of Revelation 20. 
Because when we look at the Revelation 20, how can these secret things be brought in? How can these things, known and unknown, good and bad, be brought in? Look at the last book of the Bible. Look at Revelation 20. Revelation 20 with me. The 20th chapter of Revelation. Look at Revelation 20, verses 12 and 13. Revelation 20, verses 12 and 13. In the 20th chapter of Revelation, verse 12 and 13, the Bible says this. It says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Now, how can the dead stand before God? Well, again, their standing before God is going to be seen. How? Notice. And I saw the dead, verse 12. Small and great stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Brothers and sisters, do you see that? According to their works. So even the dead are standing because their records are there. Notice it says in verse 14, And the sea gave up their dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up. Sorry. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Verse 13 basically says that death, hell, and the sea cannot keep individuals from being judged. The grave, nor the depths of the sea, cannot hide what's recorded in the books. God has books, even a book of life, and those that are going to be judged are judged out of the records of God. God has recorded things, and these books of judgment are coming in where everything has been recorded. We are living in a time with ring phones on people's doors and cameras everywhere, at lights, on the freeway, on the highway, in grocery stores, in cell phones. Their people are being recorded almost 24-7. You think God? Is catching up with technology or oh, God has already all throughout the ceaseless ages of our understanding continually recorded all things the Bible says these things are recorded even every secret thing that God will judge the world in righteousness even just before the second coming of Christ let's turn again to the book of Daniel and see a text that we looked at over and over again but now we're seeing and getting more understanding of this text and we look at the book of Daniel now go to Daniel 7 in our previous studies, we've looked at this text over and over. And now we're getting a greater understanding of it. We look at this text in context of Ecclesiastes and Revelation. Look at Daniel 7 now. Daniel the 7th chapter. In Daniel 7, notice Daniel 7 verses 9, 10 and verse 13 and 14. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 and 10 and verse 13 and 14. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 and 10 says this. It says in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9, it said, I beheld till thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Fiery stream, verse 10 says, issued and came forth from before him. Thousand, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, established, and the books were Open. Now Revelation 20 makes sense to us because the books were open in the judgment so that God could judge the living and the dead. Notice it says in verse 13 and 14. Revelation chapter, sorry, Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. I saw in the night season or sight night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. The judgment established. The Ancient of Days of the Father sits and the Son of God is brought for him, or to him into this judgment scene, into this judgment hour, into this opening of the books and examination. Father and the Son are seen clearly here. In the 14th verse it says this, And there was given him during this judgment, or established because of this looking at who is righteous and who is not, there was established, it says, there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that sh which shall not be destroyed. Do we see it even clearer now? How we talk about the establishing of the kingdom of God, how the need of grace, overcoming power, and establishing through the gospel is necessary so that individuals can be, after examined and passing the judgment, God examining their covered sins, their washed away sins, their blotted sins in the book of life, find them 
just as Christ is. Find them able to be kingdom citizens, to stand in the end of time. This is how Christ received a kingdom, because all from Adam to the last saint have been examined and found to be true. Those that would not yield to the prince of God, would not keep themselves in the love of God by faith and consecration and daily devotion, these individuals fall back into the dark world below. Where will you stand in that great day, brother and sister? Where are your feet standing right now? Are you on the rock eternal or are you on sinking sand? Are you preparing to make a shipwreck of faith or has your anchor held in the storm of life? When the storms unfold, it's winds of strife. When the anchor lifts and the strong tides rage, will your anchor drift or firm remain? The songwriter says, we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure though the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move. Fastened, oh brother and sister, you know the song. Brother and sister says, we must know that our anchor is sure and secure. We must know in this soon coming kingdom of God that will come after the judgment God is going to make up a people. God is making up a people right now because we're going to find out very clearly that the judgment is not to begin. Judgment has already begun. We're living in a time where the judgment has already begun. We're going to show without any doubt from the Bible, from history, and from the calculations that anyone can do of the prophecies of Daniel that the judgment has already begun. It's almost completed. We are the last generation to live upon the earth. We are the generation that will see Christ. All the prophecies are coming to pass before our eyes. And we are, unfortunately, as people that even claim to preach the word, dealing so much with what the newscasters say about the events, not showing the prophecies and teaching the message. Now, brothers and sisters, what should we detail more? The unfolding of news events or the unfolding of the prophecies so that we'll have an anchor to the soul, to understand carefully the word of God. Without the careful line upon line delineation and right dividing of the word, all the examination of the things taking place in the world cannot benefit us. It'll only cause our hearts to fail with fear. And most people I meet that claim to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ are more fearful than faithful. Let us think in. They're more fearful of what man would do and governments would do and the beast would do. And all. They're more fearful than faithful. And why are they not faithful? Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. They're not studying the word of God, not hearing the right division of the word of God, not having individuals take them through the books of Daniel and Revelation that show the kingdom of God without any doubt. And the message Outlining the kingdom of God, showing the work of God for these last days. Brothers and sisters, there is a work to do, and many are not ready to do it. Why? When Jesus came to this earth, let's close here. When Jesus came to this earth, we'll leave most of what we need to talk about in our series starting tonight at 7.30, 7.30 p.m. on this channel. Tonight we'll start a series, and it'll go for 10 lessons 10 sermons dealing with the book of Daniel. If you're watching this any future time in 2023, 2024, the Lord tarrying, you can look at the description link and find that series and walk through it yourself. Look at our website, walk through it yourself. Walk through it by the grace of God. However, we're going live every night and going through this series on Daniel because we must both be receptive, receiving and also be able to transmit or give the gospel message for this hour. Christ came to this earth 2,000 years ago to bring in, to announce, to declare, to disseminate the understanding of the kingdom of grace. The kingdom of grace. He was ushering in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And this work in Mark chapter 1. Let's look at there. Mark chapter 1. Go to your Bible in the New Testament. Mark the first chapter. In Mark chapter 1, <clears throat> when Christ came, when the kingdom of glory was not yet set up, his kingdom, that kingdom was not of this world, he said. But he was setting up a kingdom that was within, a kingdom of grace. And he announced it because the preaching of the gospel was the preaching of the kingdom.
the gospel message was the message of the kingdom because the work of the gospel, the work of recovering that crown of character that was lost is the good news through Jesus Christ. From our first study, we've traced this all the way down. So when we look at this message in Mark, the first chapter, when Christ came and announced both the time and the work of this gospel of the kingdom, he was bringing in the kingdom of grace. Brothers and sisters, will there be a gospel announcing the time and also the work of the kingdom of glory? Now think upon that. When Jesus came, he announced the kingdom of grace. He said, this gospel of the kingdom has come. The time has come. And he was announcing his kingdom of grace. What kind of grace are we talking about? In Mark, the first chapter, Mark chapter 1. Look at Mark chapter 1. Look at verse 7 and 8. Let's see what kind of, of kingdom was being. Because John the Baptist knew what was coming. When John the Baptist spoke of Jesus, he said this. In Mark chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, it says, And preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I. This is John speaking. After me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down the nose. I indeed, verse 8, have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. What was Christ bringing again? Coming to bring? The Holy Ghost. To bring in this dispensation of the Holy Spirit, to bring in the operation and work of the third person of the Godhead, not bound by physical form, that can be all places, all time, with all believers, until the, in the end of the world or this time where the kingdom of glory is to be set up. This was announced when he announced the gospel of the kingdom. This is what this mightier preacher was coming to do that John said he was not worthy to be associated with. He would baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He would bring in this work of the Holy Ghost. Notice Christ's message here in Mark the first chapter. Look at Mark 4, Mark 1, Mark 1 verses 14 and 15. Mark 1 verse 14 and 15. It says in Mark 1, 14, it says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came unto Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. What gospel? The gospel of the kingdom of God. Gospel of what kingdom of God? What gospel of what kingdom was he coming to preach? He said, this kingdom was not of my world. This, my kingdom is not of this world. He was speaking of the kingdom of glory. So what gospel of the kingdom was he preaching and announcing and bringing to the world? Look again. <clears throat> Verse 15. And saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Brothers and sisters, he said the kingdom of God is at hand. He announced this time had been fulfilled. The time had come. And this is a time for what? Repentance and believing the gospel. The kingdom of grace was announced. And the gospel of the kingdom, this gospel of his grace, was announced when that kingdom was established and brought forth. People were aware, they were made, they were, God was giving a herald through his son to announce people and bring people into this kingdom that they may stand in the eternal kingdom. At the end of the world, at the end of the world, God also must have heralds. There also must be a declaration of the gospel of the kingdom at the end of the world. Because the gospel of the kingdom is coming at the end of the world. And this kingdom of grace that Christ brought in is going to make way for an everlasting kingdom. Will there be an everlasting kingdom announced at the end of the world? And are there people to stand and give this message where <coughs> The kingdom of glory will be announced. And this everlasting kingdom announced along with this gospel message announced. And even letting people know that a reason why the prerequisite to establish yourself in this kingdom is a 
ability by His grace, by the work of this gospel, to pass the judgment. This is what we're to see in the last day. This is what Matthew 24, 14 is talking about. This witness. The gospel shall be preached for a witness unto all nations. And then shall they come. Where do we see among all nations a gospel being preached? Bringing an understanding of this glory. Kingdom of glory. An everlasting kingdom. This gospel of the end times. And a judgment that we must understand and stand in. Look at the 14th chapter of Revelation as we close. Revelation 14, brothers and sisters, all these things rightly divided show us that we are at the end of time. And how many are ready, are prepared, or even are prepared in a practical way to take part in this last message? So many claim that they're preaching this message, but you can't get them to do one or two or maybe even a series on health reform. How? If they are prepared to give this message. Christ and his, all the disciples did health and the gospel. In the first announcing of the kingdom, the second announcing, people think they're preaching the gospel and they're not doing health in the gospel. The, the first is not like the second. The first shall not be last, and last shall not be as the first. In the book of Revelation, chapter 14, notice how all these things, the glory, the everlasting gospel, the ju it's all here. In Revelation 14, Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7, it says this. Revelation 14, verse 6 says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the what? Everlasting gospel. Gospel of the kingdom, which was grace. This gospel of the kingdom of the end time is the gospel of glory, an everlasting kingdom. Everlasting kingdom, everlasting gospel. I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, just as Matthew 24 said. Every nation must hear this special gospel that has a special witness with it. Verse 7 says this, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give what? Kingdom of glory. This gospel message is announcing and bringing people a knowledge of the glory of God and this kingdom of glory. This gospel of the kingdom, this everlasting kingdom of glory. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Let's stop there, brothers and sisters. This is the message of the hour. This is the work to be done. But who is preaching this message? Who is giving this message? Not lip service. Who is giving this message? And as Christ and his disciples, preaching and teaching and healing and preparing to give the message in all the world. How can we say it's just for the church members or go around doing a work that we call ministry? There's nothing more than entertaining ourselves, edutainment. Preaching amongst ourselves while the world perishes. These individuals mentioned as angels, as messengers, go to every kindred, tongue, and people, going into all the world, doing a work of announcing this kingdom of glory and this everlasting kingdom or gospel, fearing God and giving glory to him, letting people know the hour of his judgment is come, not coming, is come. It's already here. This brings us to a vital point of understanding that we, if we would be able to overcome and stand in these last days, must understand what this message is. And we must have a sure foundation that this message is true. And the judgment is taking place and it cannot be done without examining the books of Daniel. Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Daniel 8 and 9, all the way. We must have a foundation. Tonight at 7.30 p.m., Live on this channel and all our channels, we're going to start a message, a series of messages on the book of Daniel to get you an understanding because most people are not hearing this message. And it was prophesied that there would be a famine in the land. And here it is. We must understand. We must gather warmth from the coldness, later seen coldness of others. Help us, dear God, to be among that number that are seen studying that are running to and fro, that knowledge may be increased. Help us understand that this judgment hour is a serious time where we must make sure our calling and election is sure. Our faith in Jesus Christ is not a fairy tale. Brothers and sisters, where are you standing right now? I've become to the close of this message. Where are you standing? Where are you standing with Jesus Christ as a personal Savior this morning, today? Where are you standing? And before you answer that, how is your standing demonstrated by what you're practically doing, the fruit of your life, 
and people you're studying with sharing this message. You believe it, but you're not sharing it? You believe this message? You don't have anyone that you're studying with? You believe it, but you're not in some way, tr I'm not talking about just giving out books. Who are you studying with? Are we studying with, are we sharing the message? Are we have any type of witness, Matthew 24, 14? What witness? Where is the fruit? The parable that Christ gave of that man dunging around that tree one more year. Brothers and sisters, where are the fruits of our labor? Are we saved by what we do? Not saved by what we do, but we are definitely not saved if we're not doing anything. If we are, with all the power and opportunities we have, doing nothing, then it is a sure sign that our tree is dead in the earth. It needs to be uncumbering the ground. Help us, dear God, to understand the need of salvation today. We've heard this message, and some may want to reconsecrate their life to God. They may want to understand to agree to it. They say, Lord, help me to not only be faithful and give you my heart now, but help me to go through every one of these messages in this 10 series revival in the book of Daniel. Starting tonight at 7.30 and going through, we pray that every soul hearing this, and you would share this link, share this idea. Let people know what's happening, that they may study to show themselves the proof. They may get on this, this gospel train, as it were, moving forward to Zion. They may make their calling an election. Sure, if you desire to give your heart to Christ at this time, you desire to believe upon him as a savior. Believe that these prophecies are showing you the last days, that what we've studied night after night in this series, from night one all the way to tonight, is the truth of God. Pray with me this prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters hearing these words at this time, and I pray that you would do a work that we can't do for ourselves, dear God, that you would give us the gift of repentance, that we would feel godly sorrow for our sins, not other people's sins, for our sins, that we might we might be brought, even at this hour, through thy saving grace, to true repentance. That we may truly confess our sins. And we may also receive the Spirit of God, cleansing, guiding, empowering us, giving us a remembrance of all things in our daily study and daily devotion that you have said unto us, that you have promised us, the exceeding great and precious promises, Lord, by which we partake of the divine nature. Help us, dear God, one and all, to be found faithful at that day. We believe your word. You said in no wise will you cast out those that come unto you. Lord, we come. Save us, regenerate us, cleanse us, renew us, and give us an understanding of thy word that we may be full of faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. Fill us with thy word then. Words of faith we ask, for we ask all these blessings and we receive your forgiveness, your repentance, your grace, even now that we may find ourselves crowned with glory in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Brothers and sisters, we have had a wonderful time studying, and there are some that even as we are hearing this have not made a decision. They sat through that prayer and did not in any way yield their heart and mind to God. May God continue to trouble the waters of their mind that they may make a decision as for you that have and those that have not. Tonight at 7.30, there's an opportunity to walk through this study in Daniel and understand again and afresh and even to a greater degree the principles of the kingdom of God as the soon coming Savior precedes his arrival with a judgment. What does that mean? And let's walk down through history and prophecy, the words of God. May God bless you with gospel grace. May God give you in your spirit, a great understanding. Stay by with us for a few seconds as we talk about how you can reach out to this ministry. Contact us, send questions, inquire how we're doing, as well as finance and help us to continue to financially keep this ministry going in Jesus' name. God bless you, and we we'll look to see you again. Maranatha. Your tithes, offerings, and gifts save souls and save lives. Support Gospel of Health Ministry by mail, Gospel of Health, P.O. Box 2009, Dade City, Florida, 33526. By phone, 661-209-7142. To donate via PayPal, www.paypal.com slash paypalme slash gospel of health. And on Cash App, dollar sign gospel of health. 
Find more from Gospel of Health on social media platforms at J.R. Cofer.